Frankfurt, West Germany, 1956. Eleven years after the end of World War II, many crimes of the Nazi era still go unpunished. The perpetrators of these crimes are walking free. Many judges, prosecutors and police officers have already served under the Nazis. Now they have no interest in prosecuting their former comrades for actions similar to their own. For the victims of these crimes, this is unbearable. To end this, Attorney General Fritz Bauer establishes a special unit of young prosecutors with no ties to the old regime. I am Esther Katz. I am one of these prosecutors. We are investigating Nazi crimes and bringing perpetrators to justice. Not to avenge, not to hear, but to show that there are laws that apply to all. It doesn't make us popular. Most want to forget. Some want us to shut up. But they cannot stop us. Nothing belongs to the past. Everything is still present and can become the future again. Hello? Anybody here? Not much of a welcome party. I didn't hear you enter. <laughs> you must be Miss Katz, right? Must I? It would make sense. This be... Oh, right. Paula. Paula Fisher. I'm a legal assistant here for Mr. Bauer's team. Well, the legal assistant. We're a bit understaffed at the moment. It's nice to meet you, Paula. Oh, it's my pleasure, believe me. I've brought you this week's newspaper and a letter that arrived for you. Anyway, I should probably be going. I'll be at my desk if you need anything. You'll find me. Or through the intercom. We just had the whole system installed. It made my life so much easier. Thank you. Is there anything else? Mr. Bauer wants to talk with you once you've acclimatized. His words, not mine. He should be arriving soon for that matter. So should the rest of the team. I see. Very well then. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on our team, Miss Katz. All right then. First encounter, check. Time for me to settle in. The last holiday we spent together as a family. I'm so glad Dad made us do it. Franz was such a show off that summer. Always trying to impress the girls. I wish you were here, big brother. Look at that. Written evidence of all those sleepless nights. And the ton of coffee. But here I am. I finally made it. Pretty sure it was all worth it. A new job deserves a fresh journal. Ready to be filled with no... Um, hello? Mr. Bauer is ready for you. He says, at your own time. With him, that means as soon as possible. Thank you. I'd better get going then. Good luck. Cuts. Welcome to the front line. Good morning, Dr. Bauer. 
Just missed her. We're working together. My name, as you already know, is Fritz Bauer. General Prosecutor. Much to the displeasure of the public, I insist on investigating the many crimes committed under the NSDAP. Most of them, of course, have long since gone cold. And nobody out there truly wishes for us, for you, to solve them. Or frankly, to even touch them. A rather thankless job, may I say. Are you up for it? I'm well aware of this. You see, I'm not entirely sure of that. But no matter. Miss Cutts, I believe I have the perfect case for you to start with. I'm listening. Hans Naumann, an older gentleman, shot just before the end of the war. And why does this fall under our jurisdiction? The suspects. According to the victim's wife, her husband was taken by uniformed men for no reason. He never came back. His body was found in a forest nearby after the war. Shot in the head. Do we have any files? Any leads? Yes, from the original investigation. Miss Naumann reported her husband's death to the police. A case was opened. The public prosecutor's office investigated members of the NSDAP local group. Their suspects. However, no charges were pressed. Based on the investigation, Hans Naumann was lawfully executed. You don't think that's the case, do you? I have my doubts. The first thing that I'll need you to establish is why Hans Naumann was taken. Depending on the answer, we see if the case warrants a full investigation. I asked Mrs. Fisher to prepare a file. It should probably already be on your desk. I suggest you familiarize yourself with it and invite the widow to give a statement. Mrs. Fisher should be able to help you with that. Right. Look at the files. Invite the first witness. I'll need a refresher on the Nazi hierarchy. Understanding the chain of command would... Paula did say to ask her if I needed anything. Miss Katz, how can I help you? I need some additional files. Something specific? I need more details regarding NS organizations. Chains of commands, ranks and badges. Anything you can get your hands on. Of course, I'll get right to it. Anything else? I need you to invite a potential witness. Of course, who should I reach out to? Ludmilla Naumann, the victim's widow. I want to hear her version of what happened. Of course, I'm on top of it. Anything else? Thank you. Here if you need anything. Oh, by the way, did you talk to your colleagues already? They should still be in their offices. What are you doing here, Cuts? Getting reacquainted with my new co-worker. I had hoped so, at least. You know perfectly well what I mean. Do I know? Why are you here, Cuts? Not in the room. Here, working for Mr. Bauer. I could ask you the same thing. Last I remember, you were looking for the easiest way to climb the ladder. Touché. I suppose since you're here, you won't be going anywhere for some time. Not anywhere up, at least. And there's enough trouble here without all this. Agreed. A truce, then, to keep it simple. Very well, as long as you keep to it. Cuts. Welcome to our little hell. Peters.
Oh, hello. Oh, please, forgive the mess. I'm afraid I didn't have the time to clean up. Miss Cuts, right? Everybody seems to already know my name. Sorry, news spread fast here. Paula reads through everything that passes her hands. So, well, everything. And the word gets around. Esther Katz, nice to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. Christoph Olmuth. Christoph, preferably. I try to be on first name basis. And how's that going? It worked with Paula. Not with Simon. Didn't dare to try it with Bauer. In this case, I would prefer you treat me like your male colleagues. We are a small team. I'd love to tell you that we are small and tight-knit, but, well, happy to have more people join the fight. Especially someone like you. And what do you mean by that? Well, you're a woman. That's a very astute observation. Right. Sorry. What I meant to say is, you're a woman and a prosecutor. Uh, that didn't sound better. It doesn't matter. Just forget it. I apologize. Well, it's just rare. Too rare, if you ask me. Right. Again, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. I'm looking forward to working alongside with you. There's nothing left for me to do. I should call it a day. you'd have a moment, I got you the files you requested. Good morning, Paula. An overview of the Wehrmacht, police and NSDAP, just as ordered. Great. I'll get started on them right away. Mrs. Naumann should be joining us later today. Not a morning person, apparently. 
Thank you, Paula. Oh, one more thing. They finally connected your phone. It's working all right. You even missed a call. I wrote down the number for you. I should... Who do I want to call? Hello? Esther Katz speaking. I was called from this number. Oh, Esther, my dear. So good to hear you. Dad? Where are you? What's this number? I'm at home. We got a new number. It's unlisted. Your mother hopes this way we'll receive fewer client calls. I hope I'm not disturbing you, dear. I'm busy, but I can always make room to talk to you. Oh no, it's all right then. You should return to your work. If you ever feel like talking, you can always reach out to me, dear. My hard-working daughter, I'm proud of you. Paula? Mrs. Nauman just arrived. I showed her to the conference room. Thank you. I'll be right there. You must be Mrs. Nauman. Thank you for coming. My name is Esther Katz. I am one of the prosecutors in Attorney General Bauer's team. Good morning, Miss Katz. I am very grateful that you found the time. The last prosecutor who looked into my husband's death didn't even speak to me. He dismissed the case, claiming my husband was rightfully executed as a traitor. Did your husband do anything for which he could be accused of treason? Of course not. The men that took him weren't even looking for him. I see. I know it's not easy, but please take me through the day your husband was taken. It was in April 45, only days before the Americans came. Where were you that day? Home. We lived in a small house. Hans was upstairs when the doorbell rang, before someone hammered against the door. When you opened the door, who was it? There were two men. One of them was pointing a gun at me. Do you remember what they looked like? Both wore uniforms. Brown ones, if I'm not mistaken. Did they belong to the Wehrmacht? No. Not Wehrmacht, and not police either. Maybe some kind of party officials or something. One of them was small, thin. He wore glasses, I remember that. The second man was bigger. He was the one pointing the gun at me. He seemed to be in charge. What made you think that? He had two golden stripes on his uniform, and he was bossing the small one around. He yelled and waved his gun around to scare me. They demanded to speak to Mr. Nauman. The gun was still there and... I was just so afraid I couldn't even move. Hans came down and asked them what they wanted. They demanded to know if there was anyone with us. When we said no, the smaller guy looked in the other rooms. 
He found no one. It was only Hans and I. Then the big one told Hans that he had to come with them for questioning. Did they say why they were questioning him? No, they did not. They ignored Hans when he asked for their reason. Then everything happened so fast. The small one said they'd let him go if our son would turn himself in. Then they just herded him out, like an animal. This was the last time I saw him alive. Me and my son never got the chance to say goodbye. Do you know where they brought Hans? No. I never found out. What was that man's comment about your son? Jan. He was living with us at that time. But he didn't show up that night or the following. He got into some trouble. Bad trouble. Do you think the men were looking for your son? I believe so, yes. At least, that's what they said. Wait a second. I think it was mentioned somewhere. Please, take a look. Oh god. Here it is. He recognized him as Jan Naumann. <sighs> I can't believe there was proof all along, and the former prosecutor just dismissed it. How could he? I wish I knew. I am really sorry. Please, continue. What happened upon your son's return? When Jan finally came back, it was already too late. We asked the authorities about Hans, but they pretended not to know anything. After war, my husband was found dead. In a forest nearby. Shot. I believe he died the same day they took him. I would really like to talk to your son about it. You and I both, dear. But I am afraid that's not possible. Jan died only a few months after his father. Pneumonia. Hans was innocent. They killed him, and that's murder, no matter what they call it. I hear you, Mrs. Norman. Please, Miss Katz, will you find the man? I will do my very best. Thank you. We will let you know if we have enough for an indictment. Please, Paula will help you to the door. Goodbye. I should update Mr. Bauer. Hello, Miss Kurtz. Any news regarding the Norman case? Yes, I think so. After talking to Mrs. Norman, it seems like Hans Norman was indeed innocent. The men were looking for his son, Jan Norman. When they couldn't find Jan, they took Hans instead, the father. I assume that's what Miss Norman told you. But are you sure she is telling the truth? According to the files, the man they were looking for had climbed up a flagpole, torn down a flag and beaten up a block warden when he was caught in the act. Hans Naumann was 77 years old at the time. Of course, there are older men who are in good shape, but... Pulling down a flag and beating someone up seems unlikely. I understand. Yes. I see, but why did the man take him? if they knew he was innocent. According to Mrs. Naumann, they took him as a hostage. They were hoping his son, Jan, would surrender once he learned that they had his father. Highly illegal, even back then. Not uncommon, though. But why did they shoot the old man? That I don't know yet. 
but I believe this is definitely a case for us. It is indeed. So what happens now? I will officially reopen the investigations tomorrow. You need to find out who was at the crime scene when Hans Norman was shot. We need witnesses. I'd start with the names mentioned in the files of the first investigation. Excellent. Let's get this case to court, Miss Cuts. Time to invite the suspects. And it would be good to know more about them. That poor man. And that poor woman. She lost everyone she loved in a matter of a few months. I really hope we can help her. I hope so too. Anything I can do? I need some additional files. Only a few documents survived the bombing, but I found a group photo and a member list from a few years before the incident. I took the liberty of marking the suspects. One of them, Mr. Schwarz, is dead. Well, that was quick. Just doing my job. Any other documents I can get for you? The member list is helpful, but I'd still need something more about our suspects. Can you get me their files? I'll reach out to the Berlin Document Center. But, um, just so you know, they tend to take their time. Nothing for now. I need you to... Of course. Let me get... Sure. How can I help you? I need you to invite a... Of course. Please invite... We'll reach anything else. Thank you. Here if you need... Thank you, Pat. Good morning. My name is Esther Katz. A pleasure, miss. Could you tell me how long I have to wait for the prosecutor? Mr. Kibitz, I'm the prosecutor here. 
Oh, modern times, I guess. How long will this take? It will take as long as it takes. It's all right, miss. I'm just asking. Let's get started, shall we? This is about the arrest of Hans Naumann in Munich on April 28, 1945. According to a witness, two men picked up Mr. Naumann from his apartment. Were you one of them? You're pretty, you know that. Mr. Kiebitz, were you one of those men? No, I wasn't. We drove to the house, then our group leader and Mr. Schickert got out of the car to arrest the man. Then they tossed the old man into the car and headed to the district office. After we put him in the cell, I waited in the hallway, talking to Mr. Schickert. The district office, where was it located? We just had moved it into the basement of an old brewery. Still stuffed with beer bottles and barrels. The higher ups decided it would be a safer place for us. With all the Yank air raids. Group leader Fartman went into the district leader's office. What was the name of the district leader? Herbert Schwarz. Could you hear what they were saying? Only after they came out of the office. District leader Schwarz came out and gave the command. What command? What did he say? He ordered us to execute the man. Then he left. I felt uneasy. This wasn't right. We followed group leader Faltman to the cell. There was tension. How did you ensure the energy supply? The district struggled to produce enough energy. There were frequent power failures. For emergency, we had a generator. If worst came to worst, we used oil lamps. Could you describe the cell? Very basic. Mattress, window, chair. What was Mr. Faltman doing? Group leader Faltman seemed to hesitate. He shared my concerns about killing the old son. He told us to wait. Yet Shikat insisted. He referred to that new order about dealing with insurgents. He was such a stickler for the rules. He could be really annoying about these things. What did he say? He insisted that any delay would constitute treason. The tension was strong. Group leader Faltman ordered us to wait once more. But Shikat drew his gun and shot him. Were the compartments prepared to host prisoners? Kind of. We adjusted them so our prisoner could stay there for interrogations and not get out. For how long were the prisoners held in these cells? Mostly around a week. Why did you relocate the office? Because of a big air raid. We wanted to be underground. We hoped that we would be safer there. How many people were in your local group? Around 10, but we were never all present at the same time due to shifts and different responsibilities. They must have had petrol to run the generator or to destroy evidence.
So what you are saying is, Schickert shot the old man against Mr. Feldman's order? Exactly. That's horrible. These are brutal events you're getting to hear here. Are you sure you're up for it? Honestly, no one would think this is a job for a woman. What do you have to prove? I will file a formal complaint. That will not be necessary, Mr. Kiebitz. My superior knows quite well that I am up for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have this job. Thank you for your time, Mr. Kiebitz. Goodbye, Miss Katz. I should update Mr. Bauer. Miss Katz, what brings me to the honor of your visit? I interviewed our first suspect. Have you read the transcript? I did. How did it go? Well, this Mr. Kiebitz, let me put it this way. I have met newts who were more likable. But we're not having a sympathy contest, are we, Miss Katz? No, of course not. I know how you feel, but I can say from experience, it's better to ignore it. Besides him being an unpleasant fellow, what do you think about Mr. Kibitz? Kibitz says he saw how his colleague Schickert killed Mr. Naumann. And according to him, Schickert shot even against the express order of the superior Feldmann. And he's telling the truth? Maybe, maybe not. At the current stage of the investigation, it is impossible to say conclusively. I agree. This means you have to investigate further. Of course, what he says could be true, but he could also try to cover up his own involvement. Either way, I see three further questions we need to answer. First question, who shot Mr. Naumann? Who did pull the trigger? Was it really Mr. Schickert who pulled the trigger and executed the victim? Or is Kiebitz lying? Second question. Mr. Kiebitz claimed that his superior, Faltmann, had refused the order by District Leader Schwarz to execute the prisoner. It might be relevant to clarify whether this is true. And thirdly, the witness testifies that Mr. Schickert threatened to inform the Gestapo about the insubordination. Whether this is true or not is up to debate, but either way should be investigated. Threatening others could be considered coercion in court and, in case of doubt, also affect the verdict. If you found an answer to all of these questions, we should be able to build a solid case. Miss Katz, may I have a word? I got something that might help you. So, I have done some digging beforehand. Yes? And found something potentially useful for you. The brewery's blueprint. I put it in your office, on the cork board. I thought it might help you to have more of a physical understanding of the crime scene. I'm sure it will. Thank you, Paula.
How can I help you? I need you to invite a potential witness. Of course. Who should I reach out to? Please invite Mr. Shigat next. We'll reach out immediately. There's nothing left for me to do. I should call it a day. Second? Yes, Paula? Mr. Shickard, the witness you wanted to see? I'm afraid he arrived a bit early. He's waiting for you in the conference room. Already? I know. I told him he might have to wait. That he will. We did specify the time. <sighs> of course, Miss Katz. How I need something special. Any updates on the suspect's personnel files? I've made the request, but no news since then. Berlin's as silent as always. Mr. Schickert, I didn't expect you yet. Arriving on time means you're 15 minutes late. Very traditional. Nothing wrong with good traditional values. Thank you for coming. My name is Esther Katz. I am the prosecutor in charge. I'll cut right to the chase. What happened on the 28th of April back in 45? So, you're finally reopening the case, aren't you? Yes, we do. There are questions that have to be resolved. It is time for some gentlemen to answer for what happened back then. Just to be clear, you are referring to... Kibitz and local group leader Feitmann. So, your superior and your colleague. What had happened? On that day, Feitmann, Kibitz and I had captured an alleged insurgent. We had taken him to the district office and locked him in a cell. It was an old man. Was his name Hans Naumann? It's more than ten years ago, but I'm pretty certain that this was his name, yes. What did the district building look like? It had been moved to a brewery because of the air raids. 
there was an office, individual cells, and a long corridor lined with boxes, barrels, and bottles. Please describe the situation. I was in the hallway with Mr. Kibitz, while local group leader Faltmann was in Schwarz's office to report to the district leader. Shortly after, the two men came out. Pointing to the cells, the district leader gave the command. What kind of command? He ordered us to shoot the prisoner. The district leader returned to his office together with Mr. Kibitz. Mr. Feldman asked me to follow him. Together we walked down the corridor to the cell where the old man was kept. Describe the cell to me. Small and dirty, with a narrow, barred window just under the ceiling. Not that the prisoners in here deserved much more. They were there for a reason. Most of them at the least. What did Mr. Feitman do? The group leader raised his voice. Do you remember his words? He told me to shoot the prisoner. And did you shoot the prisoner? No, I did not. The man was clearly innocent. How did you come to this conclusion? He was accused of... What was it again? I remember someone mentioning it. Just a second, I have that somewhere. According to the former prosecutor's report, Mr. Norman carried out highly treasonable actions. That's what they called it, all right. But what kind of actions are we talking about here? The whole thing didn't match up. Besides, group leader Faltmann himself had said earlier that we had only taken him hostage. Him and Kibitz had hoped that the perpetrator would turn himself in if they held the old man hostage. Why did they assume that? Because the perpetrator was the son of the old man. That's what they believed, at least. So they had hoped the son would come to get his father released? Exactly. But you didn't think their plan would work? Doesn't matter what I was thinking. You can't just go and take a fellow German hostage. How did your superior take your refusal? Not well. He yelled and I argued. Do you remember your words? I told him that it made no sense and that we should refrain from doing that. Group leader Faltmann then threatened me. He said he'd report me to the Gestapo, that I would be severely punished. Possibly killed. But you still refused. I did. I just couldn't do it. I left the room. Outside the cell, I met Kibitz, who was about to enter. A gun in his hand. Cocked. The next thing I hear is the shot. Can you tell me more about your local group? We mainly wrote reports and helped in the district where help was needed. I'm sure the group members had a drink here from time to time. After all, the building was probably still full of beer. 
Were there any other prisoners at that time? No. The old man was the only one that day. So what you are saying is that Mr. Kibitz shot him? He did indeed. I know it. But why would he do that? What was his reason? What do I care about his reason? What he did was wrong. That's why I'm glad the case has been reopened. You break the rules, you get punished. That's the way it should be. We will make sure the right people face the consequences, Mr. Shekert. Thank you for coming in. The pleasure is all mine. Goodbye, Miss Cutts. Interesting. The suspects contradict each other in multiple aspects. I could use the reconstruction board to get a better idea, or update Mr. Bauer. I can also just call it it. I should still at least... Now that was quite an interesting development. Somebody sure is lying. But who? Can't say I envy your job right now, Miss Cutts. Oh, before I forget, there was another call from your father for you. Wanted you to call back. Apart from that, how can I help you? Could you locate the third suspect, Alfred Faltmann? I'm on top of it. He should be arriving soon. Anything else? Have you seen Mr. Bauer today? Oh no, he didn't come in. I think he's following a hot lead right now. I even remember him mentioning a contact in Argentina. Can you believe it? Argentina! That sounds very promising. Anything else? Are there any updates about the personal files? I suspect I already sound like a broken record to the Berlin Document Center. Sadly, no news yet, but I will keep you on track once I hear something. Anything else? Thank you, Paula. That will be all for now. Here if you need anything. Who do I want to call? Cuts. Hello, Mom. It's Esther. Esther, my darling. How nice of you to call. Could I talk to Dad? How rude of you. Don't you want to ask your poor old mother how she is? Ugh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. How are you, Mom? Terrible. My only daughter never calls. And when she does, she only wants to talk to her father. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Dad had called, and I was supposed to call him back. <laughs> it's all right, my dear. I'm just kidding. I know that your job is important to you, and unfortunately only your dad can help you. To answer your question, your father isn't home. You'll have to make do with me, but you're calling at just the right time. Am I? You are. I just invited the Müllers for coffee this Saturday. You have to come. I'm dying to show off my smart daughter. Who are the Müllers? Do I even know them? I don't think you have met them yet. They just moved into the piano floor of the house opposite. Oh. Did the Webers move out? No, no, the other house. The Langs. You remember the Langs, right? Thomas Lang, he used to work at the bank. You used to play with their daughter. Black hair, a ponytail, always got her dress dirty. I just can't remember her name. I really don't know who you are talking about. Anyway, I can't this weekend. Oh, what a pity. The Müllers are really nice people. And they have this good-looking son. Mom! All right, all right. Just mentioning it, no ulterior motives. Another weekend, then. Are you free the week after? I need to get back to work now, Mom. A shame. Thanks for your call, anyway. Get back to me soon, will you? Sure. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, Esther. There's nothing left for me to do. I should call it a day. The man was clearly innocent. 
Group leader Falkman seemed to hesitate. I just couldn't do it. I felt uneasy. This wasn't right. I met Kibitz. But she could do his gun. A gun in his hand. Back then, everyone was an ardent Nazi. Now they all claim to have resisted, doubted, hesitated, to have said no. Trouble is, somebody must have said yes to suspects to accounts. Both would have us believe their innocence. Both would point towards the other. But who tells the truth? Let's hope our final witness can offer some answers. Esther Katz. Are you Jewish? <laughs> <laughs>